Hi everyone, welcome back to my channel. In today's video, I have yet another enclosure tour because I'm uh, too much when it comes to enclosures. But this one, I actually just like had a spare enclosure and I was like, let me just see if I can throw this together and actually enjoy it. And it's funny because I think the fact that I set no expectations for the enclosure, the fact that I didn't know what I was gonna do, I just kind of like went with it and kind of like had a good time with it. I think that's actually why I ended up liking it. And I explained in the video, there's a few reasons why I moved my red-eyed crocodile skink from her previous enclosure that I made in January to this one. I'm really happy I did because her behavior has automatically just been better. Like I've already seen her more often and she's eaten so fast compared to when I moved her in th that enclosure back in January. I know typically like downgrading from a bigger enclosure to a smaller enclosure is frowned upon, but I think in this case it actually worked out really well. And I hope you'll hear me out as to why I did that. But yeah, without saying too much or making this too long, let's just go ahead and get started with the tour. Oh, yeah, please subscribe, hit the notification bell. Okay, go ahead and get started. Tour time! Hey guys, and welcome back to my channel. In today's video, I want to show you guys my new red egg crocodile skink enclosure. Now, I know I kind of have a bad rap or a bad history of um, never being satisfied with my enclosures, but I'm happy to report that this is not one of those times. So I first had Fugaku in an enclosure that was 24 by 18 by 12, and I liked it, but it just wasn't like the best I could do. It didn't have a DIY background, and I just wanted to make it better. So I had moved Fugaku into a 36 by 18 by 12, and right from the get-go, I wasn't really satisfied with that enclosure. I was having trouble with humidity. I felt that it was too big, like she wasn't using the space adequately enough. And I thought that maybe I would try moving her back into a 24 by 18 by 12 and also make something that would hold humidity better. So I made this enclosure and I'm happy to report that like literally the moment she got in this enclosure, I started to see her a bit more and she ate literally the first night she was in here, which typically whenever I move Fugaku to a new enclosure or even if I just give her a funny look, she will decide not to eat. So. This is it at a glance, and I want to take you in for a closer look. Oh, before I do that, um, please subscribe and hit the notification bell, and uh, let me know what you think in the comments once the video is over. So this is the entire enclosure. So this is the entire enclosure from left to right. And I know you guys are probably tired of enclosure tours, but this one I'm finally satisfied with. So I figured I would give a proper tour. Plus, I like to keep things updated on my channel. So I want to start with how I built this. And I did not do a lot of footage of how I built it. I'm sorry. It really was just like a thrown together moment. Like a lot of the things I already had. And I was like, let me see if I can make this work. And fortunately, I did. So you can see this is all water. I have this tape here to remind me of where I need to make sure the water is above. But this is all water. The entire thing. And the reason that this is water, and it looks dirty, but it's just like the fact that there's no light because there's earth on top of this and there's like little speckles of dirt. It's fine, trust me. It just looks it just looks like there's dirt because there is. There's dirt in the enclosure. Um, and it's more of a yellow color because that's tannins being released from the leaves, from the wood, from the dirt. Anyways, that's just kind of how it goes with bioactive or live plants and enclosures. But this water down here is really, really great for keeping humidity in this section where the soil is and for keeping the water over here. So as you can see, she has one large water area here with a filter and there's a little bit of space behind the filter too because I knew she'd like to hide behind there and she has. And then I have this section down here, which is a little bit like more slow moving water with not a lot going on and it's darker. So if she wanted to hide here, she has this spot. If she wanted to go over here, she has that spot and she has behind the filter too. I made this by taking egg crate. You see this like little square plastic piece here? It's egg crate. And so I have egg crate laying across the whole bottom here and all the way out to here. I made this shape out of egg crate. And then I stood it up like this to create a blockade so that water could pass through here as you can kind of see it down there. Water could pass through but she could not pass through and get stuck underneath here. So that's all along this side here and there. And then there's egg crate all along here. And then I have some egg crate standing vertically to act as legs and support structure. I have some in the middle, some along the back, some along this side, and then I have like one piece right here and one piece right there. So it's just 
holding it all together structurally safe and sound. On top of that, you're gonna wanna put something that water can pass through because the purpose of this is that water can pass through this substrate and come down to here. And when water evaporates, it can come through the substrate here. And so it keeps a nice, moist environment. Um, it also doesn't allow too much water logging to occur either, which you do not want because water logging is bad. It can kill your plants. So to show you how moist this substrate is, it's pretty wet as you can see. The moss stays dry on top, but the reason that the moss is on top is to help trap some of the moisture in the substrate. So um, if this were to get sprayed down, the moss would be wet on top. But because of this, and because of this, I don't really ever have to spray it down to attain proper humidity. And I crocodile skinks like it really humid between like 70 and 90 at all times. It's 88 degrees, I'm sorry, that's 88% humidity um, in the enclosure, which is good, nice and moist for her. And I, I'm so happy that this worked out. I didn't even have to put any like acrylic up here because sometimes you can put pieces of acrylic or tin foil. I've seen people use glass. You put it on top of the screen to decrease ventilation, but I haven't needed to do that, which is great. This worked out a lot better than I anticipated. Like I said, I kind of just threw it together to see if it would work and oh my God, it really has. And the plants are thriving and she's thriving and I'm really happy about it. So basically back to the egg crate. So I created the egg crate platform. I created it along the sides here. And then I put some coconut fiber mat on top to hold the substrate in. You could use really anything where water will come through or water will come up. I had leftover coconut fiber mat because I used that on the sides because I really, really did not feel like doing um, carving of the background and I was like, listen, I just don't, I just don't want to carve backgrounds anymore. I was like, I was going to have to carve enough of this, you know, because this is spray foam right here. We'll get to that in a minute. So I was like, I don't want to carve backgrounds anymore. So I used coconut fiber um, mats and then I covered them in silicone and then covered them in Eco Earth and sphagnum moss to create three walled side in. The reason I created all three walls is because this makes your red-eyed crocodile skink feel super safe. They have a tendency to be a bit on the shy side and get spooked easy, especially wild caught ones, which I think mine is. And so having the three walls makes her feel nice and safe. Plus it looks nice. So I spray foamed with um, great stuff, gaps and cracks. It fills up the gaps, whoopsie, fills up the gaps here. And then I ran it all along this edge, all the way down there. I ran it over here to create this like little landmass that would be like a little bridge that she could climb up and down. Obviously she doesn't need to use it. She just climbs up and down that side. But I like that it also created like a nice still water area for her to be in if she wanted to. And then I sprayed foam all around here as well so that no dirt fell into here. Obviously some still will, but that happens over here and then passes through. But yeah, just as much dirt to keep in here as possible, I spray foamed all around the uh, egg crate and coconut fiber mat that I put down. Then I used Josh's Frog's ABG mix for substrate. I actually just took it from her old enclosure, so there was tons of cleanup crew that I disturbed when I was moving it in here. So I did that, and then I topped it off with some Eco Earth and some moss and some leaf litter, which you can see. What else is in here? Of course we have hides. This is one cork hide, there's another cork hide, and there's a coconut hide. I think she's in there right now, but I'm not sure. I think that's everything. Oh, these are just some some gravel. Her cleanup crew is isopods and springtails. She has dwarf white tropical isopods and she has springtails. And I think that's everything. Typical build. I didn't film any of the process. I apologize. One day I actually will film the process, but I feel like I just get so preoccupied trying to create something that I actually like that I don't bother to film. I did film how I made my polydarium, my new Fireblade Toad polydarium, but I also hate it. So we'll see if I actually ever post that. Um, but you can go check it out on TikTok. I did post it on TikTok because I you know, got to get them TikTok views. So anyways, there is her heater, by the way, her thermostat thing back there. And uh, she also has this light up here. This is a, a Zoomed light. It's not UVB. Um, it's just like to help plant growth and it has been doing a good job of that and i would like to offer her uvb at some time however i would need to do some research about this enclosure and what type of uvb to offer her so i will get back to you on that one that's it that is the entirety of her enclosure and her food bowl obviously is way in the back and she literally just ate when i fed her last night so She's doing great in this enclosure and I'm really happy about it because it's one of the few I'm actually happy with and it was so simple and I think it's because I went into it just like 
throwing caution to the wind and deciding like, oh, just be happy no matter what happens, you know, just be happy. You're just putting it together. Don't, don't have too many expectations. And because I didn't have expectations, then I was happy, which I feel like is a uh, pretty indicative of life. <laughs> Throw caution to the wind, don't have expectations and you'll be thrilled. But that's it for Fugaku's enclosure. I will include a couple clips of her when I first put her in and also like sometimes I saw her exploring. And uh, yeah, thanks for watching. Thank you so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed. I hope the new enclosure like made sense to you about my issues with humidity and also the space not being adequately used. I just think it was like too large for her and like the water section was too small and I originally hated it. And I just, I just immediately right from the get go when I first built that enclosure, I was like, I hope this works, but we'll see. And it didn't. And I, I kind of knew that was happening. It was going to happen. But the new one is great and she's already been moving around in it. I catch her out pretty often um, and she's feeling nice and secure enough that she ate the first day, which is nuts. Usually whenever I move her into a new enclosure, she'll take her time to eat. But this time she ate right away, which was great. And it just, it's just, it's keeping humidity up better. It looks nicer. The water area is larger. It's more functional. I really like it. And I hope you guys did too. Let me know if you did down below. Leave a like, leave a comment, subscribe, all that good stuff. And I'll see you guys in the next one. Bye.